Hello, I'm George from the Keeper's Hive, and today we're going to talk a little bit about overwintering your uh, colony of bees. In the winter, inside the hive, there's a cluster of bees that are about 10 or 15,000 bees that need to get through the winter uh, to survive into March where the flowers start to bloom and they start to grow again. So what I want to talk about is how we uh, best get that cluster of bees to survive the winter. Well, overwintering in in the winter starts in the in the summer. It starts in the summer with effective mite management, keeping your mite levels low, checking monthly your mite levels, and treating when appropriate. This allows the viruses in the hives not to become prominent and not to make your bees sick. Uh, the population of bees overwintering is very important too. That population of bees is called winter bees. So winter bees are physiologically different than, than the rest of the year's bees because their fat bodies are, are, are bigger and we know that they need to survive six months instead of the typical six weeks that a bee survives. So winter bees are made generally in September and October. So you really want to have your mite levels and your virus levels really low before those 10 to 15,000 winter bees are made that will make the hive survive the winter. The other factor that's important is food. Obviously in the winter there are there is no nectar out there uh, for the bees to consume. So the bees need to rely on the honey that they have stored up all season to, to get enough energy to survive the winter. The last thing that you want to think about to overwinter is insulation. Obviously, you're trying to prevent heat loss, uh, so the bees need to work less in generating the heat necessary to survive the winter. The most important place to put insulation in the hive in the winter is at the top of the hive. I recommend between an inch and two inch piece of foam board insulation at the top of the hive. That insulation at the top of the hive does two things. It prevents heat loss from the top of the hive, and it also, more importantly, prevents the water vapor that the bees generate in the winter coming up, hitting a cold top of the surface, and then condensing back onto the cluster. Cold, wet bees generally don't survive the winter, so you definitely want to make sure that the insulation is at the top of the hive. The next question about the hive is how big does it have to be for the bees to survive the winter? And remember that the cluster of bees is about this big, which is about 10 to 15,000 bees. And we know that most colonies in the wild survive in trees with the average size ca uh, cavity being about 40 liters, which is about the same size of an eight or a 10 frame deep uh, hive body. So, um, Traditionally, uh, most people uh, would think that the colony, the hive needs to be two uh, or more than two deep boxes of, of size for the bees to survive the winter. In the last couple of years, at least in Southeast Pennsylvania, I've transitioned all my hives to a single deep uh, box to, to, for the bees to, to be in through the winter. Uh, Again, I'm thinking that the bees are only this big, they'll fit on seven or eight frames. So do they really need that extra space that they need to heat uh, to survive the winter? Because the goal in winter for the bees, I think is to achieve a state of torpor, which is a state of low metabolism. So ideally what you want in that hive is for the oxygen levels to fall, the CO2 levels to rise, and the bees metabolism to fall. When the bees' metabolism falls, they don't need to consume as much food in the winter uh, because the demands aren't as great. Now, do you need to insulate the walls of the hive too? Insulating the walls of the hive will decrease the amount of heat loss that that box is having during the winter. But the 
degree of heat loss that's coming off the sides of the walls is, is very small. And therefore, bees have survived uh, in Langstroth boxes for, for decades without sidewall insulation. And they've done that in very cold areas. So I personally choose not to insulate the side walls of the hive, but you can if you want to. One of the questions that comes up in, in overwintering your colony is should you have a ventilation hole at the top of the hive? The ventilation hole is usually about five eighths of an inch. It sits right underneath the top insulation. I personally don't use top ventilation on the hives. Uh, I did for many years, but about three years ago I changed and now I don't have any top ventilation on the hive. The reason why I changed is because I think that top ventilation was letting heat out of the hive. And again, my goal is to stress the bees less so they don't need to consume a whole lot of sugar and maintain that state of torpor. And having uh, less heat loss accomplishes that. People worry about not having uh, top ventilation is gonna cause the water vapor to sort of drip down on the bees. Uh, to prevent that, all you need to do is put a really thick piece of top insulation on the hives and the water vapor will condense, but it will condense on the side of the hives and the bees will use that water through the winter uh, for their nutritional needs. So I think you could do both ways. I don't think it's gonna affect uh, whether or not your colonies are going to survive or not. But if you want to limit the amount of, of heat uh, production uh, and uh, limit the amount of heat loss going on in your hive in, your, in the winter, I would strongly suggest not having top ventilation. So in summary, when I think about the important things that are necessary to overwinter my colony of bees. Number one is to have that 10 to 15,000 cluster that's healthy. Mite management in the summer and the fall, good nutrition in the fall when they're making their winter bees uh, to get that cluster of bees really healthy. The second is to have enough food in the hive for, these, for those bees to survive the winter so they don't starve. Again, if I can get the bees in a, in a really effective state of torpor, the amount of food they're gonna consume is less. And lastly, is to have that thick piece of top insulation on the hive to prevent heat loss and also to prevent their water vapor from condensing on them. If you do all three of those things, you should at least have a 90% survival in your hives through the winter.